welcome back to Under the Influence. I am here with Kate Bartlett. Hello. She is a TikTok sensation. She is a student at FIT, and we are going to talk about all things New York content creation and beyond. Yes. I'm so, so excited. First of all, can you tell everyone a little bit more about your platforms? You have one over one million on TikTok, yeah. 165k on Instagram, and growing. So what started it all? Because I know that it happened very quickly in the beginning. It did, it did. I started TikTok like so many people during quarantine. I was so bored. I was at home in Florida. I was in my parents' house and I pretty much had nothing to do. So I was like, I'm just gonna start making outfit videos. And you know, once I came back to the city, I started vlogging my days in like short, very short form on TikTok and took it from there. And now I continue to do fashion, I continue to vlog on TikTok, and I also talk about finance and budgeting. So the first video that really blew up for you was like a day in the life of a fashion student and you got like 100K in a day, right? Yeah, it was so crazy. I That's did wild growth. like what I spent in a day as a fashion student in New yeah. York and it was very basic. I mean, I was, I think like I went to the grocery store and like I went for a run and you know, very normal day. Posted it, went to bed, woke up the next morning, 100K. And I was like, why? And it honestly, it changed my life. Yeah. So I mean, now you have so a whole crazy. career. So you were a fashion student. Yeah. What career like trajectory would you say that you were on pre TikTok? So, yeah. So pre TikTok, I wanted to be a buyer when I was coming in okay. to New York and coming into school. And very quickly, I was like, whoa. Uh, I cannot sit and do Excel all day. This yeah. is not for me. I need to do something more creative. So you're a student at FIT and you are finishing school a year early. Mm -hmm. You kind of fast track through FIT I and did. you're going to be doing this full time. So what does that look like? Yes, I'm so excited. I'm graduating in a few months. I'm very, I loved school, but I'm very ready to be out and just doing this. This is what I'm so passionate about. I'm definitely gonna have a lot more time on my hands. Right now it's stressful. I mean, right. I'm lucky in that my content very much revolves around my life. So yes. it's so easy to just film throughout my day and string it together at the end of the day. And you right. know, I don't have to sit in my room all day and film. Yeah. It's just go about my day, which is nice. But I'm so excited to be able to explore other routes and you know, I'm excited. <laughs> So your first TikTok that went viral, it was about what you spend in a day. I remember I would go to dinner with my friends and I would like order water because I could not afford to pay for the food. But I figured a lot of my stuff out since then. Mm -hmm. And you said you kind of moved into like the budgeting. So would you say that like the feedback was like people were shocked about how much you spend in a day? Or was it like positive feedback? What would you say was the reaction? Yeah, I got a lot of positive feedback because I was showing, you know, budgeting tips on how to survive in the city. When I moved here, I had like no money. I had to find every little hack to just make it because I just wanted to be here so bad. And so I picked up on all these little tips and tricks and I love to share them with my audience because that's the situation for so many young people who move to the city Absolutely. is that they have to spend like that. And I wasn't seeing anybody else sharing that type of thing. So I wanted to, you know, give people a little inside look and the feedback was very positive for the most part. And you can be a fashion girly and still not spend too much money. Exactly, exactly. And that was always what I wanted to portray to people because I wasn't seeing other girls talk about that. Other mm. girls, you know, living this exciting and fun lifestyle, but also showing the other end of it where, okay, these are the areas that you're gonna have to save a little bit or make sacrifices right. in order to live this lifestyle. Right, so what would you say is like the most valuable hack you've taught people? like in terms of saving, like what was like, what is like the biggest money suck in New York? I think for me, it was definitely Ubers. Yeah, I started okay. my no sober yeah. Uber movement. <laughs> oh yeah, and summer. a lot of people like have caught on to that. That is totally a movement. A lot of people have, especially during the summer when it's hot outside. Yeah. It's honestly, it saves you so much money. And it was so funny, you know, like when I was doing it a lot, when it was so warm outside, I would be riding my bike and people would be yelling out cars like no sober Ubers. And I was yes, like, what have this know. turned into? It was crazy. Yeah, you gotta get on that city bike I like know. we did. It's um, fun. So, and like, it's hard now because like I don't take the subway as much as I used mm -hmm. to but like I feel like with the weather being warmer I feel like I can go anywhere in the city again by like just walking there mm -hmm. and the ubers this winter were like insane so that's like Brutal. yeah I know. definitely a big money suck 
So that's a great tip. Um, so going back to kind of your background in fashion, mm -hmm. you wanted to be a buyer. You kind of talk like about like your internships that you had in fashion. Mm -hmm. What is it like you're like when you were working in fashion before versus now on the other side experiencing some of the fashion industry from the influencer side? Yes, this has been one of the craziest things about this whole really quick life transition for me is that, you know, pre-COVID, when I was going to school, I was like, at fashion week, I was working backstage at the shows, I was dressing the models, I was, you know, walking the people to their seats, and I was just like dreaming of being there one day. And then when I came back, post pandemic, and I, you're on you the know, more glamorous side. Yes, yeah. yes, gained the following, and now I get to attend these events. It's so surreal because. I was on the other end yeah, of that, and it's yeah. just so crazy to me. I pinch myself every single you day. You probably have more of an appreciation, though, I for do. like what goes into those things because you've like seen it on both sides. I do, I do. So, what has been like your favorite thing that you've gotten to experience since having a platform? Honestly, I really love the community here in New York. I think that all of the creators here are so different. They all have their own niche and everybody kind of came up together. I mean, we all grew together. We all came yeah. from not even monetizing off of this to everybody quitting their jobs and this being their full-time thing. And that's been such a crazy thing to experience. We're all so close because of it. I, I honestly love all the New York TikTokers so much. I mean, same. <laughs> we've had such a, like great experiences with everyone we've interviewed on Under the Influence in New York. Um, what would you say has changed most about the industry since you started at home during the pandemic? Because I feel like I notice this a lot and a lot of people say this as well, that like we came out of the pandemic and there's a whole new industry of influencers mm -hmm. and creators that mm -hmm. kind of didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. So what was the biggest like shock to you? I think it's been really interesting to see how the app has evolved and how the brands have evolved with the app because just this has turned into a complete business and you know even just like two years ago the monetization and the branding and the ads they weren't as sophisticated as they are now right so it's so interesting to see brands go from like oh here is you know x amount of money like make a video to like this is exactly what we want yeah we created this sound exactly for this video you know yeah they're it's, like when they give like the talking points it's like very attuned to like what's trending at the moment exactly so it's like i feel like they're much more on it now mm -hmm. and i think also brands are like clearly valuing the you know valuing the value of influencers that are authentic and have like a really engaged following. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about how you have kept your brand and your content authentic to who you are? Because you said that you, you know, are able to do a lot of your content because it's just like filming your day mm -hmm. and it's kind of just showing yourself like you don't have to do any, go out of your way to film mm -hmm. content necessarily. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I love the community that I've built so much and it's so funny because you know, when I look at my analytics, it's 95% females between the ages yeah. of like 13 and 24. And so, you know, when I'm thinking about what I'm producing, I don't really have to think that much because it's just catering to, you know, me and like Versus what my friends would like. Right, exactly. Right. So that's made it so easy and just, it's so natural, you know, I can talk about what I like and what I like doing and trust that these people are gonna hook on to that because that's what's applicable to their life too. Right. So that's been such a great way to build a community and also like these little things like my no so rubers or getting my pre, it's like things that people are accessible that people can connect with mm -hmm. and when they can do that with you and share it, you guys build such, you build such a bond. Right, so. like connecting on personality traits exactly. is like very natural for people. Exactly. So what has been the biggest challenge would you say of all of this? Yeah, so it came about very fast. Um, obviously, with the internet and TikTok in particular, there is a lot of negativity. People, it's so much easier to hide on TikTok than it is on other platforms. Yeah, it's because, insane. Yeah, it's insane. you know, with Instagram, everybody has an Instagram. You can Google somebody's name, you will find their profile. Yeah. With TikTok, unless you're a creator, you know, your username is like user 875. Yeah, it's so true. And you can say whatever you want, and yeah. nobody's gonna know it's you. Yeah. So I think people are more brutal. But, you know, on the other end of that, it's such an incredible app and the algorithm is so amazing. It's, you know, gives people such a reach and I love it helps it. you find your people. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It does it for you. <laughs> right. Moving on from the negativity though, who has been your biggest inspiration as a creator and like who's your biggest role model, would you say? Oh my gosh. Well, like I said, I love the community in New York so much. I think it's so important to be connected with them, but I think it's so important to also unplug and be around, right. you know, people who are not even in this world at all. Um, and then people who merge from that, like one of my best friends, Luca, who I met 
when I came into FIT, he was the one who encouraged me to start TikTok during quarantine. He's like, you need to get on this. And you know, he creates videos too. So it's so fun to have people like that who kind of understand this world, but are also like, mm -hmm checked out of it completely and knew me before and yes. on the other end of it too. Right. So I think right. it's so important to have both those connections in the industry that you can talk to things about that and then people outside of it who are just not even involved and don't have any idea yeah. about it at all. Yeah, because like it can be so hard to unplug I'm sure like mm -hmm. if your whole life is on your phone mm -hmm. like having those moments that are like people very disconnected from that part of your life probably mm -hmm. feels really good. Yeah. And so being from Orlando like what has been the biggest like was there culture shock would you say coming from Florida like when you came to New York? Yeah so I, I traveled a lot growing up. Um, my sister and I would backpack through Europe every summer oh. which was so, so you've fun. You've always been very independent. Yeah yes. yeah I've always been very independent so I traveled a lot and I always knew that I wanted to come here I wouldn't say it was a big culture shock just because this is what I've always wanted and I would always visit right. and come here very different yeah very different in Orlando I definitely didn't have the same I couldn't be as creative I didn't have the same opportunities and resources mm -hmm. um, but yeah I love it here it made coming coming from a space where that was so it was not very creative at all and I didn't have those liberties to somewhere where I can do wherever I want was so refreshing yeah. and so exciting yeah and it's like, I feel like everyone feels that way no matter where you come from, which makes it so mm -hmm. special that like everyone can find their place yeah, in New York. That's the most amazing part about New York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what is next for Kate Bartlett? Well, I'm looking forward to graduating, taking this full time. I'd love to move my content into more directions than just fashion. Mm -hmm. You know, branch out into travel content and food content and workout content and, you know, be able to share in deeper, more aspects of my life other than just like, I went to the gym. Right. Being able to show like, I went to the gym and here's my workout. Yes. And have the time to do things like that. I also want to definitely do more financial content budgeting tips, keep sharing though. That's such a big passion We need, we need, we yes. need New York. Yeah, I'm super excited for the next year. So speaking of fun things you can do in the city and being creative, we're gonna go to Mew's Paint Bar. We're gonna drink a little wine, do a little painting, and get to know a little more about each I'm other. Excited. Let's awesome. go. Let's go. Why do I get stressed every time I have to paint my nails? Are we gonna switch brushes or no? <laughs> Give us a little clap. I feel like my orange can go way further. Wait, what are we doing now? I think we're doing, oh shit, I just cleaned my brush and I put orange. Wait, what are we doing now? I didn't listen.